On this episode of the Playconomics Podcast, we talk about the Steam coming to Xbox rumors and the Xbox handheld rumors. Then we get into an absolute crisis at Nintendo as they finally have a round of layoffs. And last but not least, will Perfect Dark save Embracer Group? All that and more on this episode of the Playconomics Podcast. <laughs> What's good, everyone, and welcome to episode 133 of the Playconomics Podcast, where we break down the business behind your favorite and our favorite video games and provide you with a little bit and then a lot of financial context for industry trends. I'm one of your hosts, Matt Biscari, and joined with me today, as always, is Bobby Kawiki, that guy coming from a uh, another CIA black site. Love to see it. Love to see so it. So, I, the, the, listen, the new I'm between black sites. And so I'm going to have to be a little quiet, a little more reserved than usual, because as you can hear, there's nothing, I don't, I'm not in the studio quality environment. I will be shortly. Maybe I'm building a studio in the black site. Maybe it's a mobile black site. (laughs) Mobile black site with a studio. (laughs) Good luck, Joe. Good luck finding me. Okay. Good luck. Good luck. You know who else needs luck, Bobby? Because we're going to get right into it. Because oh, as always, God. you have a time crunch that you just I absolutely you know disregard. I don't have anything. Absolutely disregard every I, single I, time. I have, I've, I have nothing left. So, the other person that needs <laughs> luck is everyone that has a PlayStation. Because the Xbox rumor mill is mm-hmm. coming through <laughs> and coming through strong. So, this week, we're discussing the hottest console news is Steam coming to Xbox? And what does that mean for the future of video games? So, Bobby, give your darkest days. Does this ruin PlayStation? How big of a mega buster deal would this be if Xbox could get Steam on its platform? And also, 1 to 10, is it happening? Uh, n- negative 7 that it's happening. Negative 7, negative 7. Strong, strong not going to happen from Bobby. <laughs> Here's what I've been trying to mull over all day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Xbox needs Steam. Steam doesn't give a fuck about Xbox. Let's make that exponentially clear. Let's make that so clear that that Gabe Newell, you want to talk about armor-plated gold black sites, Gabe Newell, Phil Spencer is on the other side of the clubs that Gabe Newell gets into. So let let me be eminently clear, okay? There's a real nice... They Photoshop Kate Middleton on the cover of a magazine, and you want me to believe a grainy photo with, like, the Zoom-type Gabe Newell? Get the hell out of here, okay? I'm just saying. It looked good to me. It looked good to me. Because here is my question. Considering that Steam has more to gain from this, than Xbox, right? Like Xbox. Uh, Xbox other way around. Xbox is more to gain this than Steam. If this was going to happen, mm-hmm. why wouldn't Steam go with PlayStation? Because the, the business model play here is, hey, you guys have a huge install base. We'll put our marketplace on your store for everything that you guys don't have, just like the way that Steam is available on both Mac and PC, but some software is not cross compatible. Here is a curated version of the Steam Store. You know, you have your little icons. Will this work on PlayStation? Whatever. Can I can I give you my short answer as to why they didn't reach out to PlayStation? They, PlayStation they should... doesn't do shit like this. PlayStation but, is but very. Why... We do this. We do this good, and we do this only. It's I don't a... know, man. Uh, Look, yeah. could this be a very real thing that happens yes we we are living in the end times here where nothing makes sense sony anymore. doesn't have a game until 2025 yeah, you know okay, okay. I'm, xbox I'm... is winning like listen it's winning just... what winning what 2024 baby 2024 Congratul- congratulations i guarantee you no xbox game you know what i hope the the shittiest playstation game comes out and i hope the best xbox game comes out 
And I hope the PlayStation game wins game of the year. <laughs> and I just, from my you, heart. The only reason I could say that with 100% certainty that that will not happen is because you guys do not have a game slated for 2024. That you know that about. You ju- I, forgot, I forgot that your they uncle works at They would have said it by place. now. They would have said it by now. Why would they... There's no way. There's no content. Let's, let's I don't want to get into this let's, argument. Let's, yeah, let's I, I don't want to get into let's, this let's argument. Let's refocus here. The sucks. rumor that I think holds even less water than Steam... Co- Could it happen? Yes. Will it happen? Maybe. The 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 numbers just don't pencil out to me on... Are you okay, above negative wh- seven now? No. Why, okay. like, why would Gabe Newell do this? W- they have... Because it, it's only about the Xbox install base. Because if you have a PC, you can just you can natively Steam. install Steam, yep. right? Agreed. And the Xbox install base, you know, it's it's like you, your brother, Tim. The thick, the, yeah, the thick men. The thick men definitely have the Xbox install base. Phil so, Spencer. But, like, there's only like four the of you with Xbox. people that have Xbox Game Pass subscriptions. Because they released those numbers. Okay, so then here's my next thing. Mm -hmm. It would have to be a curated store because if, I don't know, name like a a low-grade third-party game. Guacamele. I love Guacamele. I don't know why that just came to mind. I'm assuming Guacamele is on Steam. Can you you just check that for me? It, It doesn't matter. We get the point. Some random game that's on Steam but is also on Xbox Game Pass. Why? Like, at, at what point is the... Do they because have to curate can, it? They have no, to... Cur- in that example, you don't, because they, you could buy Guacamelee f- on your Xbox. You wouldn't, because it's on Game Pass. You could so still then, buy it on Steam why, if you wanted but why, to. But why, it but is why Steam. would Steam put themselves in a marketplace where they're directly being undercut by competition. That makes no sense. What you just said makes no sense. For Steam. For Steam. For Xbox, it makes 100%. Because there's but a as larger I, as I said, library. Gabe Newell far outranks Phil Spencer. Yes. And here, let, let, me, let me take you down Please. the rabbit hole of where I think Please. this is going. This, this. So I think this is a very similar conversation to the one we had like 10-ish years ago with cross-platform and where 10 years ago there was no playing call of duty with your xbox friends on playstation there was no playing call of duty between pc and xbox between xbox and nintendo playstation and nintendo none of that could happen 10 years ago we're getting to the same environment with steam where it's not just the xbox environment that steam wants it wants the console player base. Not just Xbox. It wants PlayStation. It wants Nintendo. Xbox, historically, is at the forefront of making these types of adaption. They were the first person to do crossplay because it made sense between Xbox and PC because it was the same player base owned by the same people. And from there, they got Nintendo, and then eventually Sony was forced to get into crossplay. This is going to be the same scenario here where Steam is going to be a way to purchase and play games on your Xbox. And the value add for Steam is that somebody that was on Steam day one can now continue to interact with their um, family of products through their Xbox. And they get the adoption of somebody that wouldn't have gone to Steam because they only have an Xbox and they only have a PlayStation. They only have a switch. So you open up yourself to all of this revenue for potentials in the future because they don't have a PC that they have steam on. But I could tell you right now, five years ago, I had no way to access steam because I wasn't using a gaming computer. I can now, but if Steam was on my Xbox, I could have interacted with games. And I think the crossover between Game Pass and Steam is definitely there, but I don't think it's heavy enough where Steam would be like, never, under no circumstance would it ever happen. And I think that conversation gets even stronger when this is clearly just a foot in the door. Xbox is willing to do it. You get in with Xbox, and then Nintendo and Sony are forced to do it 
in competition with Xbox. Thoughts? That one of us is right and one of us lives in New Jersey. Can we talk about the even less likely hold scenario? On, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not going to fight you on this. I'm not going to fight you on this. The, the business re- the, No, the business realities just don't pencil out. Why would why? Gabe it's a, Newell? It's a completely untapped player base. Anyone that has a console doesn't have Steam. Like Correct. if they don't have a computer, why wouldn't he want but a what? But that? because why are you sacrificing like your seat your seeding ground your seeding ground to for what reason? More money. Like what yeah, but <clears throat> more money look, twenty five million is cute. That is is a drop in the bucket for Steam because that's assuming that every single one of those 25 million people buys something on Steam and buys enough things on Steam that the rip that Gabe Newell is getting is worth the time in his day, which it's not. It'll be. It, I'm assuming it'll be better than the Apple deal where they get less than. Um, they get less than 30. It. I. Th- I think this is going to be a scenario of you are categorically wrong on this yeah we'll see like i said one of us is right and one of us is you the so let me let me pull on the thread a little bit a little bit more if this comes to xbox and not nintendo and playstation right away how big of a concern is sony's market into the pc era through steam about to be because that is their cash cow right now. Like they need to start releasing things on Steam to float their games, and it's one of their alternate streams of revenue. They would need to strike a deal saying our games cannot go on Xbox. Well, and yeah, how that's much... why I said it would be something curated. So my question to you is that do you think that relationship with those two PlayStation games is more important than everything they would get from being on xbox 100 percent. oh i disagree it's two okay. games it's okay. two games okay. one of us is right and one of us but steam steam is 100 like i think denim hat i think this is a great move for steam because it is a completely untapped audience they have no console share they don't need to go into the console space and this is just the transition this is extending the transition of games as a service platforms and this is going to be another step and another key win for games are going to be in a uh, service state. The next thing you want to talk about is the Xbox handheld, which the article that I linked here from Yahoo.com absolutely rips Phil Spencer because the direct quote isn't that he wants to make a handheld, is that he wants to make handhelds feel like an xbox and feel like the xbox interface and get the xbox interface and this man for two pages of this article goes on to rip the fact that outside of the steam deck which runs on proprietary steam software and they have their own custom interface the other two the legion the whatever the lenovo Uh, Legion version is yeah both run on windows 11 and it is a detriment to their ability to run by them being on windows 11 and it's just full two pages of phil spencer stay in your lane and i think they are correct with the handheld if they want to do a hand excuse me if they want to do a handheld xbox make your own and make it the game pass machine 100 percent on it if they were to strike the series s and make the handheld the Series S option, and make it dockable like the Switch, and just say, come at me, Nintendo. I'm big on them trying to do that, but just trying to like have a already external company get the Xbox user interface, and be like, yeah, use our interface. I don't think it's going to work, and what I really don't want to see is them going out and buying one of these. And buying some like third party handheld thing that's close to market. I don't want to see that from Xbox. The yes, buying you do. needs to stop. You'd no, love the buying that, needs man. to stop for a little bit. You'd love the buying needs that. to stop for a little bit. Here's here's what I think. I think I'm trying not to choose violence. I'm trying to be careful with how cogent I am. Well, I mean 
you did defend the portal. So you were big on the portal. Because here's why I was big on the portal. Because PlayStation made the opposite choice to Xbox in that they said, we are not going to make streaming to your phone the thing. Xbox Mm -hmm. said, we're going to make streaming to your phone the thing. The Mm -hmm. portal gets you not exactly to the same place, but almost solves the same solution in a different way. The And they categorically missed on it. The portal? Yes. The, the portal is crushing right now. It is not crushing. 100% it's crushing. Matt, you are you, I, no. dead to rights wrong. No, it's not. Okay, okay. Well, the portal's crushing. You, you can look it up sales not. numbers. It's It's sold out. Um, sure, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm right. Um, here's what I will say. I think the best way I could put this is for Xbox to go, it, it would be antithetical to everything that Xbox has set up to this point for them to go into the handheld market, whether that's through software or through hardware themselves, like you're saying, buying something that's close to market because up till now, the bell that they were ringing was we are so our tech is so good you can run all our games on any phone with a half decent internet connection yep so why would you then like the 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 r&d cost on something physical doesn't pencil out you're going to license the xbox dashboard Eh? stupid just yeah just dumb Again, like, I, I, disagree. I don't see this I disagree happening. With the, yeah, I, I think Steam, I'm at like an 8 out of 10. It's going to happen. It's just when the Xbox handheld, I completely agree, especially with the amount of conversations they have about making like a competitor to the Apple store. Mm-hmm. You're not going to make the competitor to an Apple store and then put it on a handheld that only is dedicated to playing video games. You're going to either put it on an Apple phone, put it on a windows phone and they're like, they're going to have to make the phone market work. So I think an Xbox handheld is completely out of scope. No shot. They would, I'd, I would rather them see dedicated support for like the surface, which would be a terrible idea. Cause it's just who wants a computer tablet or just double down on the phone thing that you're, discussing because i completely agree they made their bed with the phone market and they 100 percent want to get into the phone market and stay there so i yep. agree ha- xbox handheld no shot zero out of ten one out of ten because i could see phil spencer being like ah we could buy a studio and just do it why not and then steam i'm at an eight out of ten steam i'm at an eight out of ten i think this is going to be a big thing and i think it's going to be like a turning point for games as a service I will never play games again. Yeah. I, I said to you yesterday, um, one of my favorite coffee is Bones Coffee Company. Yep. If uh, they're making a Fallout coffee, coffee. for the show, yes. if all my favorite things just became coffee, I would be fine with that. Elden Ring coffee. Yeah. If like, I'm going to buy the, the Fallout coffee. That's oh, happening. 100%. 100%. You getting a pre ground? You getting a whole bean? Pre ground, pre ground. Do I? Yeah, a man of class. A man of class. Do I look like I have a PC? Pre ground. Listen, Jacob. Listen. First of all, no, we are a Mac household with Sony products. We we sure. invest in good tech here. Man, that's just a complete mistake. What we're going to switch to is topic two because we're done talking about Fallout Coffee. Although, if you are out there for some coffee, get the Fallout Coffee and then go watch the show. Uh, unrelated, I tried to watch season two of Halo yesterday. You and love the first, that shit. The first episode was awful. And it's done. I'm not watching season two. It's just, I. it's over. Bye. Like, you should have done better, Halo TV show. You should have done better. Topic two. As we breeze through this episode of Play Economics, is yeah twenty minutes ab- in. <laughs> yeah, absolute crisis at Nintendo as they finally have a round of layoffs. And before I completely clickbait title this, temper your expectations. They're tempered, o- buddy. It was U.S. QA contractor testing only. 
So QA testers got canned again. Uh, and their plan is to either bring them on full time and get rid of contract work or they're offering the contractors severance pay. So it's still layoffs, but like low the key nicest is, way possible. <laughs> is Nintendo the best employer ever? They're like, listen, we are getting away from our contract work. We're going to offer you full time positions or severance. Which one? Which one do you want? And that is wild it's just it almost negates the whole fact that they had layoffs because i was reading this and i was literally like bobby said on two episodes ago when nintendo has layoffs economic crisis and then i read the article and i'm like if you would have just read the top of this bobby would have been freaking out but you i, go into I firmly stand by this but they're just converting everyone to full time. Like, is that or no? No, they I, no, no. Let, me, let me let me let me let me um be clear here. I still stand by what I said. I just don't think it is currently happening. Yeah, this is not it. This is not a full scale layoff. They're laying off some contractors. They're giving them severance, which is at, if you work in any industry that worked with contractors, severance pay when their term ends is insane nobody does that and i don't think that is in any way an industry standard good for nintendo bringing on a bunch of full-time employees also really good good for nintendo good boss nintendo good boss thank you nintendo very yeah. cool the interesting part is that gameindustries.biz is reporting that this is largely due to a content drought and a specific drought for QA testers. <laughs> Content drought, Matt. You didn't play Princess Peach Showtime? Because Bro, no Bro, you're games... part of the problem. You're part of the problem. Why? Just say What it. have I bought on my Switch? Oh, I'm sorry. Is it because there's a female protagonist in the game? Oh. Is that oh, why you oh, didn't buy it, man? Oh. I, I can't Oh, win Mario with you. can I... have more games than God? I can't even... I can't... I can never win with you because it's either I buy the Nintendo product and I'm a shill... <laughs> or I don't buy the Nintendo pro the Nintendo product, and I'm a bigot. Like, <laughs> there's no way for me to win. I always lose with Nintendo, and that brings up a reoccurring theme with Nintendo. No matter Everyone what lost. happens, you <laughs> lost, and they won. But this game industries game industries biz is reporting that the content drought is specifically around the fact that no games for the Switch Two have been developed yet. Which almost guarantees that I am right that this is not coming out in 2024. Thoughts? Because I believe this is going this and the PS uh, PS5 Pro not coming out in 2024 <laughs> is okay. getting closer and closer. We're a full quarter and I haven't heard anything about these two in quite some goddamn time. June, you're gonna see PS5 Pro. May June launch for like, holiday. Now announce oh, okay announcements i thought you yep. were saying in three months they're gonna be like hey here it is again with no games aligned with it no i don't think that's true i think i think so you think they got a shadow drop something with it so here's it's the way e that hold I on hold on it's either gonna be one of the live service games or ghost of tsushima 2 is gonna look a hundred times prettier than Ghost of Tsushima One, and that's what the secret is. Because Ghost can go, and if not, but what I'm would make just... you? What would make you think that it? They haven't said anything about it. Why Look, are what they? What did holding? I say? What did I say? What did I say last time? The messaging behind PS Five Pro is going to be the best and most the best and common denominator way to play your backlog and be ready for what comes next. I think that's going to be the messaging. It's what makes the most sense. I think that's a weak argument. Like I, I just think that's it's weak still, messaging. It's still, it's still going to just listen again. One of us is right. And one of I, us I lives in the garden state. How I'm many gardens saying, do you like, have in your state? You liar. A ton, a ton. There is a lot of garden space in and farmland in New Jersey. Can you imagine living in a state so soft you're named after gardens? What 
You you live in Connecticut. You don't know where the hell I live. I'm going to look up what state. If I did live in Connecticut, which I don't, um, I'm pretty sure they're like the Constitution state, despite the fact that the Constitution was not signed in Connecticut. No. Connecticut. Answer in the comments. Answer in the comments, because I don't I don't want to Google this. Is the what state? Hold on. One one last question. <laughs> Nothing. It, the boring state, because even Connecticut doesn't know what it is. To get back to the Switch 2, Switch 2 ain't launching in 2024. There's no shot. They have no games slated, yeah, no. and they have very, very late games slated for the Switch. We're going to get it in 2025, like the PS5 Pro, and we're going to get some circular diskless version of the Xbox. Do you think be a we... horizontal upgrade. Side grade. Side grade? Do you think... Side grade. Side grade? What yeah, I don't, I, says I don't even... the shit that you say? Side I'm sa- grade. I'm telling you, it's it's not going to be an upgrade. Like, the Xbox is just like, we're going to give you a discless one that's circular. And I guarantee you that's what's... Co- I'm not happy about it. I just think that that's what's going to come out of Xbox. Because I don't think the PS5 Pro is going to be an actual upgrade to the PS5. And it's just like... It's going to be some random thing that people nerd out about that doesn't actually make a difference. Not like the transition to 4K from the PS4 Pro. But I've made my point. Can we talk about Embracer Group? Yes, we can. And how Joanna Dark is going to save it. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something. You know who's uh, happier than a pig in shit right now? Randy Pitchford, who's the CEO over there at Gearbox. That guy has pulled the golden parachute ripcord so many times. His company has been sold so many times that every time he still remains, despite the scandal, this Wild. just dude, this dude's like, I guess I'm just going to keep making Borderlands. They're fine. Yep. So what, what Bobby's alluding to is that um, Embracer Group sold off Gearbox to take two for $460 million. This comes off the, bra- the back of Embracer Group getting denied and their deal pulled out for a $2 billion deal, completely fell through, and now they've just been selling off pieces left and right for the last two years. So my question to you, Bobby, is they're obviously reeling, and they're just absolute dumpster fire. Oh, you mean buying 150,000 different disparate studios and trying to aim them all at AAA games without any sort of cohesive launch plan isn't a good idea? Not for them. Not for them. Don't like oh, their execution okay. on it. Okay. Okay. What yes. game are they banking yeah. on? Yeah, you're like the socialists. It just hasn't been tried yet. No, Xbox Communism is doing just fine. Had, you don't get it. You just haven't given it a chance. Xbox <laughs> is doing fine. They have oh the money to back God. it up. They have the long-term vision to back it up. Embracer Group having zero metric of success and being a dumpster fire from day one. Don't necessarily think that the business strategy that Embracer Group is currently pursuing is one that's going to clearly pan out from them. They got, you know, they were in a bit of a too big to fail situation where they were just gobbling everything up with zero real. Failed. Yeah, and then they failed. And, and there was no real plan to execute on the games. You think that Perfect Dark is going to be this. <laughs> it's just, it's just the only thing left. It's the only thing they haven't sold. And destroy all humans. And destroy all humans. Sure. If there was a game that I was like, okay, instantly going to sell well, has good faith with all of the people that play it, moderately successful, has name credibility, it's Borderlands. I thought they would double down on Gearbox shit. They did it. They were like, no, (laughs) get rid of it. A good game? Never. Not in this life. So when does Crystal Dynamics get released? And when does Xbox buy it and they only make Perfect Dark? Well, first of all, remember when uh, Xbox had a stu- a a quadruple A studio that was making Perfect Dark, the initiative? Yeah, and then they didn't. Yeah, they didn't. Nobody wants a perfect dark game, and it makes me sad because I want a perfect dark game. You didn't know her name, Matt. You can no, roll the tape. Yeah, you yeah. Have you have no record you, of that. Matt, 
Matt is on film. Get the CPA to go you back. No- we are. We have the footage. It's published of me telling you her name. The issue is that 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 was off camera. No, it was. It was. It was it, that allegedly happened, but it happened off camera. CPA, yeah, okay. see if you can find it. I guarantee that that was cut out of the episode because I did the edit that week, and I know it was cut out of the episode. <clears throat> allegedly. I think what we're going to start to see How? is we're going to we're we're going to see the tide go out on acquisitions for a while for a couple of reasons. The economy that we so many people are getting burnt across the board that everyone is getting immensely gun shy when it comes to just buy 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 buy. Yep. Money is getting more expensive. Uh you see layoffs across the board and truth be told like what we're in this weird middle ground where if we stop right now, we're fine, but there aren't too many more steps bet- b- between where we are and like two companies because who is like, <clears throat> you know? Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think there's definitely a, we're getting to the point, at least in, I'll disagree with you in indie games, but for triple a games, we're getting very close to, there's a handful of companies that aren't owned, but are strongly affiliated with one of the big three. Yep. Outside of that, it's all indie development, which in my personal opinion is going to, as soon as all three of them adopt streaming services, those are all going to go away. They might as well not exist exist because the only way you're going to play them is on Nintendo streaming service, PlayStation streaming service, and Xbox streaming service or Steam. Those are the three ways that you're going to get it. So I completely agree with you. And I think the buying spree is over. I think the last, I think the ABK acquisition was so massive that it's just like, none of us need to do that. We're done. We didn't think that was going to go through. These deals are starting to get scrutinized. Let's leave it alone for a little bit. And then PlayStation bought Bungie and that was clearly a mistake. And if Sony is starting to make mistakes like that, everyone else should be gun shy. Yep. Like, if you could take Sony and purchase Bungie, who has Destiny and had worked on Halo when it was in its heyday, and that's considered a bad purchase now, maybe, maybe lay off, don't spend a hundred or five hundred million dollars on Crystal Dynamics. Maybe, maybe don't. Maybe, 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 it's, not <clears throat> maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it's not worth it. Can we just take a, before the Discord question of the week, brought to you by Philip Morris Cigarettes, take a small sojourn on things that are going to be worth it yes go for it so ABK. no 100 percent. so previews dropped this week yep for judas ken levine's next game that's it's bioshock matt it's bioshock it's fine what like <clears throat> are you gonna sit here and say bioshock isn't one of the top five greatest games of all time I want a release date. I don't care. I okay, do, like. I don't. I don't this. care yeah, about yeah, games fair, that fair, haven't fair, come fair. out yet. Fine. I do, because this. Because you don't have anything that came out. Okay, Matt. Let's talk about your bullshit question from all the troglodytes in the Discord. I don't even <laughs> give a shit. <laughs> the Discord. I'm deleting question. the Discord. I'm going to the Discord right now. I'm deleting it. No, I need. I need to post your joke nope. in the Discord. Then you can nope. delete it. It wasn't a joke. It's a confirmed theory. I, yeah. Okay. Confirmed theory. Discord question of the week is which video game character would make the best president? And after Bobby's comments for this episode, he's not allowed to answer. He's not allowed to answer. So we're going down the gambit. Controller drift. We're going down the gambit. Thick Grape says Thwomp from Mario. The the block? The angry block? Yes. No explanation. Get him out of here. Michael, you're banned. Just a hundred percent vote for it. Pete says Goopus the Mad, which is his Elden Ring character, and he wanted to call out. He has sixty strength, strong leader, sixty faith, god and country, low intelligence, industry standard, mid vitality, enough to pass the health exam based on precedent. Which Pete's Pete's getting my vote immediately because that is a <laughs> Goopus, 
Goop is the man slogan is 100% in on it. The CPA doesn't really care, just needs Tom Nook to go for treasury and says out of debt instantly, unemployment slash homelessness, zero. However, I would like to add Tom Nook has wild takes on immigration. Yeah, he one has villager, said some inf inflammatory things in the past. About one the villager newcomers. is one villager is out here saying, I don't want this person in this town anymore. And he ships them out of here and gets a new one in. So I think <laughs> Tom Nook, Tom Nook might be on the, eh, maybe not, maybe not. Bobby, your thoughts, and then I'm going to run off on a tangent because I have a whole speech for my two. Now, do you want the ticket or just the president? Because I think if the you, ticket is if important. You ha if you have a ticket, give it to me. My knee-jerk reaction yep. is Andrew Ryan, the man who created Rapture, his Randian symbol to all things, you know, am amazing, right? Just full Ayn Rand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Andrew Ryan, Kratos. Let's go full toxic masculinity. <laughs> I was gonna say Arthur Morgan, but there's a but I, I've said on the podcast, and I think about it from time to time, where there's a there's a line in the new God of War where <clears throat> Kratos is talking to his kid, not Kratos, mm -hmm. and is and Kratos is like, uh, and the kid's dog has just died. Spoiler alert: the kid's dog has literally just wow. buried the dog, and Kratos goes, "We have to go train," and the kid goes, "What do you mean? It's the middle of the night," and Kratos goes. Night will not stop our enemies. And I'm just like, oh, 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 oh. Andrew Ryan Kratos 2024. Okay, so you, who's VP? Who's P? Oh, Andrew, Andrew Ryan, Ryan is is present. He's the one out there on the stump, and Kratos is the one standing just behind him. Like they give off of like a a modern Teddy Roosevelt attitude. Like they're rough and tumble, but still clean cut. Andrew Quiet. Ryan Kratos is a great political ticket. That's but fair. also, Arthur Morgan, maybe. He's a little too soft-spoken. Sheriff? Sheriff. Mm. But he, yeah, maybe. Andrew Ryan Kratos is my pick. Love it. Okay. So here we go. Take a seat. And listen I'm, I'm still the, sitting down. To the 2024 clear two top tier presidential election candidates. One, Thrall from World of Warcraft. Let me give you some background. Mm -hmm. uh, he united the Tauren, the Orcs, the Trolls, literal zombies, and goblins to form the Horde. Gave up a position of power to answer the call for higher pa to higher power. Instantly shit hit the fan, and it has never been the same for the Horde. He had to come back and fix it. First orc president, huge di uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion metric. First orc president, just saying, just saying. Everyone else said humans, except for raccoons from Tom Nook. Also diversity. Um, strong first lady behind him. Love Drakthar. Love Drakthar. Uh, managed a civil war, two world wars, made peace with the humans after literally blowing up their major city. Sounds very American to me. Sounds American to me. Second candidate, Mario. VP, Luigi. Doctor. Well-educated. We just had COVID. And he's a Do working man. He's a blue-collar guy. White-collar doctor. Joe the Plumber. Let me introduce you to the Mario Brothers. That's all I'm saying. Also plumbers. Relatable. Everyone's gotten their girls stolen by a turtle dragon. Everyone's been there once or twice. Uh, the greatest president VP duo to ever exist. Zero disagreements. Absolute goat VP. Cabinet would be Toadsworth, Toadette. Potentially Wario. Lakitu, Bowser. Name a name a better candidate. 
Name a better captain. See, it's hard because Golden. Mario's again, the swamp. He is the he's the establishment pick. You know? He's he is the industry plant. He's I the also one that gave the deep you state orc. wants. Yeah, but the the orc is like you, you gave me the orc, which is such a bad choice that I'd have to pick Mario. You know, I'm not voting for Mario, I'm voting against the orc. What if I told you that his running mate was Bane Bloodhoof? A nope. cow shaman. Nope. Thoughts? Nope. Nope. Not nope. better. Not better. Nope. Worse. Still Actively good. worse. Actively um, worse. Don't like cow shamans. Got it. If I can have a second ticket, an auxiliary ticket, an RFK, if you will. And Aaron Rodgers. RFK and Aaron yeah. Rodgers. <laughs> That's my video game pick. Um, One was in Madden. Other... I'll give it to him. Video game character. Done. I'd like to see a real third-party video game run by the sidekicks. Like, I want Clank and Daxter. That's and the Tails. ticket I want. Clank, Daxter, Oh, God forbid. Tails. God God forbid. No, no, no. Sonic Knuckles. is like the, the, the Bernie... Like, he is just wild and crazy. Are you going to get Waluigi on that ticket, ticket then? Um, no. Blinks. Gex. Gex. If you like what you hear and you want to hear more of it, <laughs> leave us a good review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you consume this podcast content. Next week, I'll be back with good audio quality, so forgive me. <laughs> and a better host. <laughs> and a better host. Um, subscribe on YouTube. Leave us a comment down below who your video game political candidate is for your dream ticket. And until next time, and as always, happy gaming. <laughs> What? <laughs>